Welcome to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World, with CEO and award-winning author, Yvette Bethel. This podcast is dedicated to supporting leaders with a variety of solutions to build trust, inspire authentic change, and improve morale within your organization. Learn how to grow your people, build your culture, and transform your results. Welcome to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. I am Yvette Bethel, and this episode of Evolve is about holding a higher vision. Many years ago, one of my mentors told me it's important to hold employees in a higher vision than they can hold of themselves. She advocated placing emphasis on their strengths because this is where their potential lies. She said that being critical and nitpicky causes employees to focus on their limitations and the team gets much less from them because their attention is consistently being redirected to their limitations. So they're not able to explore growth opportunities in the areas where their greatest potential resides. Needless to say, I took my mentor's advice very seriously. So when I was promoted to a management role, I attempted to hold a picture of the potential of each of my coworkers that was what I thought a higher version of themselves. I found that there were some employees who could rise to the occasion and there were others who were completely frustrated by this. Their frustration happened because I wasn't curious about what that higher version could be. I just decided what it should be based on my way of thinking. The obvious happened next. My approach caused some employees to become frustrated because I caused them to become obsessed with trying to rise to the challenge. And because their commitment to the team was so high, they kept missing the mark. In my zeal for being constructive and positive, I was actually doing the same thing I was trying to avoid. I was unwittingly applying pressure because I was unable to allow my coworkers to evolve in a way that was best for them. So here are a few tips I want to share with you based on lessons that I've learned that can help you to hold your coworkers in a higher vision of themselves. Firstly, avoid projecting your strengths and weaknesses onto your employees. You will only frustrate them if you expect them to be able to do what you do well. In other words, know your employees and be curious about how they will transform. Know that their strengths and weaknesses, likes, dislikes, values, motivators, demotivators, and personality all factor into their path for growth. Secondly, sometimes a weakness is exactly that, a weakness. As a leader, you may not see much improvement when you give employees opportunities to grow in this area of vulnerability. If you are in this type of situation with a member of your team, you can shift gears and focus on their strengths. This will build their confidence and motivation levels. Thirdly, don't penalize employees if they're unsuccessful at a project designed to take them past their perceived limits. Perhaps your assessment of their potential in a particular competence was incorrect. So don't give up on them. Providing developmental opportunities is a trial and error process until you learn the employee's strengths. Fourthly, if you penalize employees at performance appraisal time because they failed at a developmental opportunity designed to understand their strengths, even if they perform their mandated duties very well, You can sabotage your efforts to build a cohesive team. Employees penalized in this way will not trust you to allow them to make mistakes as they grow. Fifthly, sometimes employees have the potential to go to the next level, but they don't have the will or interest. Find out what motivates them. And depending on the reason for their lack of will, you may be able to help them tap into their reservoir of motivation. Sometimes you cannot. For instance, I once met a frontline employee who was a natural leader with technical competencies that was so advanced that he was able to train incoming non-management employees 
as well as new managers. But he refused one promotion after the next. He demonstrated the talent, but did not have the will to go on to the next level. This can happen if an employee knows him or herself very well and doesn't want the added responsibility of supervising others. It can also happen when the employee places higher value on goals that do not include their careers. Finally, see your team and each coworker as whole. Sometimes employees appointed to a position do not possess all the skills necessary to perform satisfactorily. While right placement is optimal, sometimes it's not immediately possible. So leaders need to learn to see the entire team in a higher vision of itself, creatively harnessing the strengths of the team members to create synergies. Managers are not the only ones responsible for holding co-workers in a higher vision of themselves. As an employee, you may tend to complain about or be wary of your co-workers. Or sometimes your assessment may be accurate from your perspective. It doesn't mean that your co-workers are write-offs. It could mean that with your help or with the support of others assuming the employee's willingness to receive help, the employee can experience transformation. Institutional memory can be long-term and unforgiving. As a leader, if you do your part by forgiving coworkers for their mistakes and reaching out to them, you can build trust as persons grow into their potential. Whether you're a leader or an employee, when considering supporting the development of your fellow coworkers, you should take a long, hard look in the mirror. Ask yourself if you are able to hold a vision of yourself that will allow you to achieve your potential. If you cannot do this for yourself, how can you do it for others? Listen to your inner thoughts. Are you constantly critical of yourself or are you able to recognize your strengths? Can your team trust you to create safe space so they can make mistakes or are you plagued by judgment and bias? The answers to these questions will impact your ability to hold your coworkers in a higher vision than they can for themselves. Thank you for joining me at Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. I invite you to join me this and every Monday for a new podcast. In the meantime, remember, always continue to evolve. Thanks for listening to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. Visit YvetteBethel.com to learn more about Yvette's leadership programs and to download her free gift, Success Tips for Igniting Your Career.